This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so the brand new Super Yacht recently purchased by Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has arrived in the United States for the first time under her new ownership. Now the yacht, now named Moti Yacht Launchpad, completed her maiden voyage across the Atlantic Ocean by St. Martin and arrived in Port Everglades in Florida. Now the yacht arrived uh, yesterday at 16.35 hours, which is the 18th of March, and docked not far from a new support vessel, which is named Moti Yacht Wingman, which was already moored in Florida. Now, Mr. Zuckerberg purchased the yacht under great secrecy after visiting the yacht in the Netherlands. Been no formal acknowledgement that he's actually purchased the yacht yet. Now, the yacht was ordered and built for the Russian Vladimir Potanin, but he was unable to have the finished yacht delivered as he's under sanctions. Now, the yacht sat laid up in the Netherlands for over a year before being put on the market. Now, it's complicated when you're sanctioned Russian trying to sell a yacht in this in the Netherlands, but the Dutch government allow the vessel to be sold under their stewardship to a non-sanctioned, non-Russian person. Uh, in this instance, the owner, Putanen, who could have waited to take delivery of the yacht, decided to move the yacht on, as it could be years before the sanctions are lifted and it wouldn't be able to collect that yacht until then. Now, the money, however, will be kept in a type of escrow account until such times as it can be given to the seller, i.e. when the sanctions are lifted. Now, we don't know exactly how much Zuckerberg purchased the yacht for. The yacht had been valued at around $250 to $300 million before the yacht was put up for sale. So do you think he would get a good deal, all things considered? And let me know, would you buy the yacht that was sold under these circumstances? Now, Vladimir Potanin is a serial yacht owner whom at one point owned three almost identical yachts, Moti Yacht Nirvana, Barbara, and Anastasia. He still owns Nirvana, but he sold the other two. Now, the new yacht now owned by Zuckerberg is another in the same line of boats that looks almost identical to the original three, much larger this one though. Uh, now, Potanin is sanctioned by the UK, the US, Canada, Australia, Ukraine, and New Zealand. Now, before you write any comments about the fact the yacht's been seized just because he's Russian, uh, this is why he's sanctioned. Now, Patanin's company uh, supplies nickel to Rostec, which uses it to produce aircraft engines for the Russian Air Force. His company also supplies cobalt to the Russian nuclear weapons complex. Now, I'll put more information on screen so you can see the type of equipment that the raw ingredients he gives goes into. Um, I'll put it on screen there so you can pause it and read it. There's lots of aircraft and nuclear stuff in that. Now, after the outbreak of the war, Patanin's fortune is said to have decreased by almost $10 billion, according to Forbes Russia. Now, uh, Motiyat Wingman is still broadcasting her old name, Motiyat Dapple. This is the support vessel that is now also owned by Zuckerberg. So it seems they have yet to update the AIS on board. Now, Dapple was previously owned by Gabe Newell, the American billionaire and owner of the video game company Valve Corporation. Before the yacht was owned by uh, Gabe Newell, it was owned by Russian Dmitry Kemishik, uh, who's the owner of Flying Fox, the big 146 meter Flying Fox. Now, if you're in Florida and you can get access, please go down to the port and send us some footage or stills of the yacht. Uh, for your information, the yacht is moored at a commercial port, which is uh, Cruise Ship Terminal 29. All right, we'll move on to our next story. A sailing yacht Koru is back in the shipyard. The 127 meter or 416 foot sailing yacht is owned by Jeff Bezos and is the largest privately owned sailing yacht in the world. The yacht headed to La Ciota in France after a prior visit to Palma, Mallorca in Spain. This was after completing a transatlantic crossing from the US in recent weeks. As you can see in the AIS data map, the yacht is docked in what looks like a dry dock, although this space is often flooded with water, so it may just be moored there and not necessarily out of the water. We do have a photograph of Coro in the shipyard, but we can't tell from this photograph if the, 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 the um, boat is out of the water or not. Now, the yacht is less than three years old, so will still be under warranty. So why is the yacht in La Ciota? Why is she in the shipyard uh, when she was built in the Netherlands. 
Now, firstly, the yacht could be there because of something that's not a, not a warranty issue, such as damage. If the yacht hits something, then it won't be covered by a warranty. I was on a yacht a few years ago and we hit a floating buoy in a marina uh, when we were docking, reversing, and we damaged one of our propellers and we had to go to a shipyard, go into dry dock and, and have the, the propeller repaired, had a big dent in it. Why would the yacht go to La Ciota and not back to who made it? Well, if, if you remember the story a, a few years ago when they were going to dismantle a bridge in Rotterdam to allow the yacht to get through because the mass is so high, right? So, and that all of the stuff that came with that, people were going to go down and throw eggs at the yacht and they had to sneak it out under the cover of darkness. That's all because the yacht was built in a facility upstream of that bridge and it'd be practically impossible to get the yacht back to that location. Never mind the extra distance they'd have to go to get back to the Netherlands. So they're most likely, assuming it's warranty work, uh, is being subcontracted to La Ciota, uh, or they're sending technicians, they're just using the dry dock, and they're sending technicians from the Netherlands and, and just using that, that area to carry out the work. If you know the answer to that question, please get in touch. All right, we'll move on to our next story. Now, it's a little bit off topic here, but I th think you'll find it interesting. Australian mining billionaire Clive Palmer is apparently reviving plans to build a $1 billion replica of the Titanic after millions of people have registered interest to travel on the vessel. Titanic 2 will have all the grand ballrooms of the original and the design will stick to the original plans, even down to having third class cabins. However, the new Titanic will have all the modern amenities and facilities. Now, I'd also assume the vessel will be built using modern materials, i.e. no riveted cast iron hull. Um, the, the original vessel had steam boilers, which used uh, three giant funnels to get rid of the smoke they produced. Now, I know what you're thinking. There were four funnels on the Titanic, right? And you would be correct. But the rear or fourth funnel was non-functioning and it was just there for aesthetics. At the time, the grandness of a ship was partially determined by how many funnels the vessel had. You know, the bigger it was, the more funnels it needed. So, and the fourth, the fourth of the Titanic made it more impressive to the people at the time. I'd also assume that the ship will have enough lifeboats to go around. Uh, or, you know, all the jokes. Um, I, I can see some issues with this plan. For instance, who would want to sail in a third class cabin, right? But having said that, let's not mis be mistaken here. Um, they still exist now. They're just called inside cabins. You know, they've got no windows and they're in uh, very forward uh, part of the ship, low down, no windows uh, with, you know, little comforts. So that, that's kind of the equivalent of a third class cabin. But on the original ship, the areas would have been separated by locked doors. The third class passengers would not be allowed into the first class areas. I'd assume they'd have access to the entire vessel as it's pretty much done today, right? And of course, the ship would be required to have all the safety equipment of a modern ship. Now, who is Clive Palmer? Uh, we mentioned, as we mentioned, he's a, he's a mining billionaire. He, he was very popular on the channel last year after a super yacht named Moti Yacht Australia ran aground in Singapore. That's tongue in cheek, of course. He was not popular in the comments whatsoever. Uh, Palmer is a former politician in Australia uh, who made his fortune in mining, as I said. And in fact, people with knowledge of his yacht painted a very dark picture of what it's like to work on there. Uh, we were told he micromanages everything on board and the crew were given very bad contracts and not treated well at all. Now, we can't confirm this independently, but we were told this by multiple people who say they worked there in the past. Anyway, going back to Titanic, the, the original Titanic was about 50,000 gross tons and by today's standards would be considered a small to medium sized uh, ship, you know, liner, cruise ship, whatever. The new vessel will be 56,000 gross tons and would cost around 500 million to $1 billion to complete. Now the project completion date is 2027, which I think is unrealistic because they haven't even started building it yet. And a maiden voyage, well, you've, you've guessed it, will be Southampton to New York. Now the big question is, would you sail on this ship? Are you superstitious? Do you think it would be in bad taste to build something like this? Or are you in favor of a new Titanic? I have to admit, as some, someone who read an awful lot about this story over the years, even before the movie came out, I'd be super curious to go on board and look around. Not sure I'd want to be on the maiden voyage though. 
Uh, anyway, let us know what you think in the comments if you'd want to go on that vessel. What I'm going to be doing in, the, in this series of vlogs is recording the journey across the Atlantic. All right, remember to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sysman. You'll find many videos not featured on YouTube, including our Atlantic vlog series and a Patreon chat series. A number of new Patreon chat videos has recently been uploaded and you'll find behind the scenes footage from our trips to super yacht marinas all over the world. And the latest episode of the Yacht Report podcast is live on YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, etc. In this episode, we discussed a number of topics and asked the question, is there a super yacht blacklist? All right, if you've got any information for us about any of the stories here or any other stories, please be sure to get in touch in a normal fashion. You can get us in the email address and the ticker. You can get us on the About page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, on Twitter, and on Threema. Uh, be sure to like this video, very important for the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.